You don't. You never learn how to be become uh become a, a senior member of the community. You never learn how to become an elder. You never learn how to become the OG. All you know how to be is the young thug, and eventually you become the old thug. Uh, Diddy, Diddy, all Diddy knew was how to be a twenty five year old who could dance. That's all he knew how to do, and that's what he was for thirty years. He was Peter Pan. He was the dancing 25 year old, except he was 35, 45, and now he's in his 50s. Now he's this old man who's probably getting surgery and doing whatever he can do. I don't know if he's getting surgery or not, but he, but, but he's, he, he's trying to stay young because that's all he can do is hold on to 1997. All right. But, but what does, did, what's Diddy supposed to be? Well, he's not supposed to be what he is now. Right. But this this is um, really what I refer to as almost like like a Peter Pan ish kind of complex that gets created in hip hop and sports, because those are areas where the young tend to thrive. And this also pay attention the re what this does to the younger males in your community who are supposed to be the leaders and the, the, the industrialists, the uh, big business owners. The, they're supposed to be the men that are supposed to elevate the community. Right. Well, the younger men are looking up to these guys. And learning absolutely nothing, learning absolutely nothing. So when you have, say, a young Boyce Watkins that comes along, and and I and I'm not a rapper, I'm not an athlete. I, I just want to be a, a finance professor. I'm looking at these. I'm looking at these older men and saying, like, I have nothing to look up to. And that was that was my challenge when I was younger. I had a really hard time finding strong black men who had not either sold out, broken down, or stayed little children. And, and, and you know, the only thing that saved me was I was lucky enough to be adopted by a man who just taught me what a man is supposed to do. And, and, and what I learned from him was I learned about things like, you know, being a patient father and, 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 and loving a woman for 50 years. My parents are about to have their 50th wedding anniversary this year, 50 years, 50 years. And I watched the whole 50 years. <laughs> And believe me, they, they, if, if my mama had been an extreme feminist, they would have divorced in 1978. If my daddy had been like some of these arrogant goofball Negroes that I see on the internet, they would have divorced in 1979. Cause he, cause he had a lot of things he could have been doing. There, there was a lot of, a lot of women to sleep with a lot of liquor, a lot of liquor that could have been drank a lot of weed that could have been smoked instead of him coming home every day and taking care of a wife and two kids at the age of 25. You know, but but this is what I had a chance to see, and this was a reminder of, of 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 the fact that there are more important things than just pleasure seeking, but also the benefits that come to others when real men show up and really present themselves as what they're supposed to be. I don't think God meant for you as a black man. I'm gonna, I'm gonna finish on this point. I know I sound I'm I'm going in a little bit on some 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 topics, and and I apologize if this was too much for some people, but. But I don't think God meant for the black man to just be a rapper. God did not mean for black men to be a bunch of ditties and a bunch of DMXs. I'm sorry. I don't think that's what our purpose is. God did not mean for you to be a bunch of Ocho Cinco's and Gilbert Arenas's or to even look up to that, to even admire. I don't, there's, there's not much to admire there. I think God meant for us to be uh, fathers, leaders, husbands, winners, uh, thinkers, achievers, hard workers. I, I, I really feel that men, um, I, I think that we are meant to be tent poles, you know, like, 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 you know, and healers, they're like healers. We can do all these things, right? Like, I, let me tell you something. Let me tell you about a manhood moment I had yesterday that I'm so proud of. I, I feel so good about this. I'm proud of it. And I feel good about it. Um, yesterday, my wife engaged in the horrifically dangerous task of asking me to cook dinner for the family. Now, if you don't know, I can't cook my way out of a paper bag. I can't boil water. If I make you a grilled cheese sandwich, you might die that day. I'm a bad, bad, I'm a terrible cook. <laughs> and so, but she's like, boy, she, you, you ha we need you to make dinner. I'm like, I don't cook. Can't we do Uber Eats? No, boys, I don't want to eat street food. <laughs> Come on, Alicia. Like, that was the conversation. It's like, I don't want to, I got stuff that, I boys, boys, we need you to cook. She's like, it's easy, boys. It's it's and they she gets these like healthy meals and they send all the ingredients in the bag and they have these instructions. She's like, boys, even a little kid can understand the instructions. I said, I can't cook. I so here's what happens, right? So I'm like, all right, I'm I'm gonna go cook. This is this is how I really feel. So I go in the kitchen, 
I start reading the instructions. And I start getting frustrated immediately. And, and I get triggered when I start getting frustrated with something. I don't want to keep doing it. I start sweating and, and I'm looking at the, you know, and, and it's like, okay, so grab a, grab a, a cutting board. But I'm like, I don't know where the cutting board is. I don't know where anything is in the kitchen. And then and it's like, and do the blah, blah, blah. And base the, blah. I'm like, what, what are you talking about? Base it. I don't know. Right. So I'm mad. I'm really frustrated at I, I, it, within two minutes. So our 13 year old comes in the kitchen, Tay Tay, Taylor, I call it Tay Tay or Tater. That's her nickname. She comes in and she sees that I'm struggling trying to figure out how to cook. So she starts to help me. And she's like, no, here's the cutting board. I and mean, here's what it means. No, no, don't put the tomato. No, you put the tomatoes in the cheese. You're not supposed to do it. I'm like, well, that's what the instructions said. Right. So she, so she's helping me do this. Right. So as we're sitting here and, and I'm like, okay, boys, let's just get through this. You can do this. Come on. So, so I, we start making this chicken and we're putting, we make this little pesto thing and we have to put the stuff inside the chicken. And I'm trying to figure out, like, I, I, I've never touched raw chicken before. I'm thinking, am I going to get salmonella? But, you know, and, uh, and I'm doing this, but we're talking, right? So me and my daughter start talking. And she starts telling me, I'm like, so how's school? And she's telling me about school and her friends and everything is going on. And then, and then she starts telling me about dance class and her favorite dance group in down in Australia. And she's like, here, here's the video. And we start playing their video on the front. So the whole time we're making dinner and and we're having this awesome like father-daughter moment.